This week we've got School of Theft, Survival Sauce, and Quarantine Brick. School of Theft? <laughs> Melissa, what do you think it is? I want a whole mixtape, Joe. <laughs> you got a whole mixtape of you blowing that and the, and the slide I got, with I got all kinds of, I got. You know, I don't even hear him. Like, I tune him out. Just tune it out. Yeah. And I'm like, this is music. I, I heard everything you, you said. <laughs> I want to film you listening to his mixtape and see how long you last. <laughs> I got fucking skills. <laughs> the little, oh, you know, I have a vocal order. You look like Run DMC. Right how do you now? got it? I bought it a long time ago. You got a what? Vocoder. But, but, but it's for it's for uh, a guitar, like uh, what's uh, that guy? Uh, like it's an electronic <laughs> sound. Like it's Zap, Zap and Roger, like. Yeah. I wanna be your like, man. Well, you play, you, you're a musician for real. Oh, that sound. No. You play oh, stuff for really? real? Yeah, a little bit. That was the real chord, I feel yeah, like. It was a real Dude, chord. You, <laughs> it's the easiest chord on earth. You guys can't see this, but these piano keys are fucking filthy. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine the mouthpiece. They're so <laughs> dusted. Wow. <laughs> You guys don't appreciate this. You get to see him all the time. You can it to me. I've known this fucker for like 10 years. We're over it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. At least someone appreciates it. I love it. <laughs> Give me more. Send me the SoundCloud link. <laughs> Use it for your podcast. <laughs> you even did are your Dusky Hunters and everything. But that was legit. That one's not funny. I know it's not funny because it feels good. good. That's true. It yeah. was really good. It was pretty I good. I miss Dusky Hunters. Anyway, so for our first story, uh, which is School of Theft, do you, can you guys guess? You can't look at my screen. Oh, sorry. They teach you how to steal. So it's not that literal. Oh. It's a play on words. School of like theft. School of Rock for criminals? So you got School of Rock. An actor from School of Rock got caught stealing guitars. Oh, come oh. on. That's a stretch. Oh, I know what he's doing. So wait, he's an adult now? Was it one of the kids? Yes. Oh, snap. Oh. I know the story. I don't remember anybody in this but Jack Black. I don't remember anyone from that. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah. And the little Asian girl that was like really good. At oh, yeah. There's that tall Asian guy. I was like, oh, he's so Asian. Yeah. You mean the keyboard player? Yeah. <laughs> this guy, the lead guitarist in School of Rock for the like, oh. Zack Attack or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so he was caught stealing guitars. Oh, damn, he's old now. He just looks like the same person with a beard. <laughs> when did School of Rock come out? Because I feel like it was a lot longer than I realized. I know. It was like 2004, dude. Was, was it really? Yeah. Tell them about your 80s epiphany that you had yesterday. 15 oh. years ago? So yesterday, we're just sitting there, and I had an epiphany, and I'm like, it's 2019. Next year, it's going to be 2020. Mm -hmm. And in it's 2020... It's but it's mind-blowing. In 2020, the 80s are now 40 years away. Dude, I kid you not. Whoa. I, my son went to school, and they had 90s day. Yeah. And I realized that if they would have had the version of 90s day when I was a kid, was a kid it would have been 60s day. Oh. oh. And that's how far the 90s were. Yeah. That's crazy. Getting old is really weird. I was just at Playlist Live in Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm like one of the only 30-year-old people there. And <laughs> it's so fucking funny to see, like, as an older person now, how young people view you. It's just like, get out of my way, teacher. <laughs> 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 you can you feel that now? Oh, yeah. but then it's also perfect because I remember having the hots for my teachers, and now it's like, also I'm, perfect. Yeah. So, so now <laughs> I'm this fucking my wife, who looks like what a teacher was to me back then. Oh, oh, okay. So I get to fucking put hands on her all day, and it's and I've and I'm an adult man now, and it's awesome. It's like you're still the same little boy in now this adult body. That's exactly That's how I true. feel. I felt old as fuck last night when I was looking at TikTok. That's the you first thing where I felt like, you know what, these kids nowadays, I don't get it, get it off my phone, yeah. I can't, what is TikTok? I haven't seen it. TikTok is like a music, I, I, what is it? It's like, like musically music with like Snapchat. It's, yes. Uh, and maybe like a little bit of and Vine. And a little bit of Thriller, or yeah. Thrillist. Something like that. I don't know. Thriller? I feel so old. I don't know, you guys in your little Snapchat. Wow, you guys really explained it. Now I know what TikTok is. It's hard. It's hard. It's like instant. No, it's, it's like, like Vine movie. that's fifteen or fifteen seconds. Yeah. With okay. a little bit of the the filters and stuff from like Thrillist, mm -hmm. Thriller. I don't know that. I don't know that one. Know Thriller is the one where they used to do the music. Like it played music for you and you lip synced along to it. Yeah. That's not musically. Yeah, that's no, like but Thriller was before Musically. Oh. oh. Yeah, it was before Musically. I just see I people doing sped up music and like dance moves and stuff. Yeah, I tried Musically once and I'm like, how do people get? And there's like whole musically stars that yeah. are like rich and getting real record labels. I have a friend who's one. She she was like one of the top people on Musical.ly. 
Do you have to sing or do you, do you just lip sync to it? You just lip sync, yeah. Really? But some yeah. people are original artists on there and they put their own song in there and then they lip sync to their own song. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. But it's not cool. <laughs> it's really for, uh, mostly kids consume musically content, right? Yes. Okay. It's like the littlest kids. Yeah, like my niece does it. She was like, uncle, and I was like, yeah, kid, yeah, get away from me with your technology. You know what's yeah. been consistent? The Instagram is what I- Kids love that chipmunk <laughs> shit. Chipmunk shit? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, that's been consistent. Even when we first started YouTube, Fred was fucking hot. Oh he yeah. He was. The sped up. Yeah, yeah my kids, kids love that high energy sped up shit. Yeah. And we like the chipmunks. That's a good point. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the actual. I still like the fucking chipmunks. Oh, the chipmunks. That was the that was a shit. Though. I like that one that harmonized like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a Christmas song. That's just a Christmas yeah. song. Yeah. But they harmonize to it though. You like it when they do the Christmas song. That's that's. No, what you're, I was waiting for you to jump in and harmonize with me. No, we. <laughs> How the fuck am I supposed to know that? No, I don't. Know. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. That's like distinctly the Chipmunks though. Yeah, yeah, and they have like a harmony that they perfectly yeah. play. Yeah, well, Steve and I said the Christmas song. Yeah, that's yeah. the no. only. time. It's the Christmas don't delay one. So Joey here, the guy from School of Rock, he stole. An $800 guitar, a black Fender worth $700, and... Yo, he's that broke? Gibson Lip Paul gold top worth $1,900, so $2,000. And he also stole an amplifier. How did he, how is he carrying all these guitars? Yeah. He did it like one at a time, and like he'll go in out. and he'd be like, oh, can I check that one out? And then he'll just be playing and just walk out of the <laughs> store when the guy... While he's walking, he's playing. And then he went back? And got other ones? Different stories. Oh, I see. Yeah. This was, um... He would pawn them off. Yeah, he would go to oh. a pawn store. Is he on drugs? That's... He blames it on that. Mm. He blames it on drugs. You wanted more crack? Oh. You see? You still want child... You still want Tiger to be a child actor? I don't want him to be a child actor. I do. He's cute. He's very cute. Okay. He could be a child actor. I want to... I want to... I want to but get it's... Him. I think what happens is the type of environment and parents Fuck up the kid, yeah. dude. Sure. And it's also because my, my kids were child actors yeah. a little bit. Oh. My youngest son was uh, they were on Nickelodeon and they were oh, on Little Rascals shit. and stuff. And I realized what it is. It's oh, when you're on God. set. You guys, you know, you've been on set. Production people don't. They're not there to raise your kids. They're there to get a good performance out of the talent. Yeah. So when the talent is five years old, that good performance is fruit snacks or they were like trying to buy my kid a puppy. They were like, we'll just bring it to set so he could pet it. And I was like, are you insane? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Because oh, so they just like, want to get a performance. They just want you to be happy so you can oh, deliver. Yeah. So one day my youngest son, and I, I was just like, fam, I'm not, I got to deal with these kids when I go home. And if they're entitled on set all day, then they're going to be entitled on the rest of their life. Because if your son gets a Lamborghini on set, I can't afford this shit. Exactly. So one day my son was like, I want a banana. Before I start, I want a banana. He was like four. Like, he wasn't even being a diva. He just was like, man, he's noticing. Because kids realize when for people sure. would do stuff for them. So he's like, I want a banana. And they were like, well, we don't have any. And the PA was like, I'll, I'll go to the store and get him a banana. And I was like, no, you won't. Because <laughs> when we're at home and there's no bananas, you eat an apple or you don't eat. So don't, no bananas. And I'll take him off this set. We'll quit this show before you be a freaking jerk. You're a good yeah. dad. Yeah, I was like, fam, but that's what it is. Like, production doesn't care about raising your kids because yeah. they don't go home with them. Yeah. Their job. The same thing with actors too, right? Absolutely. Like they they become entitled because sure. just keep them happy. Don't yes. fuck up the vibes because the whole production relies yeah. on them having a good vibe. Now make that actor six, and what makes you happy? Candy, ice cream, McDonald's, yeah. whatever. These people don't care. And if you get that stuff oh. all the time, and then the parents start getting used to it, because when we were on the set of Little Rascals, these little these parent uh like mom momagers and stuff, they're worse than the kids sometimes. Jeez. Like none of the main. Oh, your your kids were on Little Rascals. Yeah, my son played Buckwheat in. A remake of Little Rascals, oh. straight to DVD. Let's let's, let's straight, straight to into the head. bin. Straight to DVD. <laughs> Target. The kids like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But some of the parents are like, "Well, our trailer's supposed to be bigger, and 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 where's my special lunch?" And I ordered wow. this and that, what and it was our first time being on yeah. set, so we were just happy with with hey. peanut butter. We were like, "Crafty, what? You can eat this stuff at any time." Like, you don't have to ask for it. It's like, like a free buffet? Yeah, I was like, this is great. But you extras know. literally get shooed away with a fucking oh stick, dude. God. Like, get away from the craft, you <laughs> Get the fuck away! <laughs> and they're like, ah, ah. <laughs> They're trying to grab a fucking so croissant. Cool, we had, like, steaks and stuff, and they'd have, like, pizza. The best. Dang. Over a tent, like, yeah, yeah. I love that dichotomy, watching extras get treated, like, they get fucking, like, uh, like a hose turned on and shit. <laughs> it's so yeah. fucking amazing. It's so That's true! That's fucking crazy. So did you pull your kids out of acting because of You that? know what? I ended up, like, slowly pulling them down because I realized like you they, you have to miss a lot of school to do it so then the schools they're missing school then kids are looking at them weird and it's really hard to raise sane children 
if they are in that environment all the time. I see. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it takes yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot more than than we really have time to do. Think like. of the money, though. You could turn these little fuckers into cash, man. You could make them into cash. I couldn't. I could. I personally was like, I told them this. If you really want to do it, we will support you. But it takes a lot. And if you really want to do it and you want to do it later in life, we'll support you then as well. But, like, it was really important that our kids were really developed and, like, sane. Because Hollywood will chew you up and spit you out, and now you're stuck with that mentality, yeah. and now you gotta go work at Target, and you feel like you're you're too good for that. Dude, I honestly think that I got these two, these parents, lovely people. Um, we did a movie called Internet Famous, and my character in the movie, he has a YouTube channel called That's One Scared Baby, and he scares the shit out of his baby. And he just does baby pranks all day long. And so uh, we, had to get high, we had to actually cast a baby for mm -hmm. the role, and uh, the parents, like by the end of production, I was scaring that baby so fucking much that that baby, if the baby even laid eyes on me, it started screaming. <laughs> it started screaming its fucking head off. Nightmares because oh of you for the rest of their life. Exactly. The baby's gonna be in therapy. I know. He's, right. he's, he's gonna be four years old smoking a cigarette. Like, Steve ruined my whole <laughs> infancy. I know. Yeah. No, they're afraid. They're they're like they have dreams, and to them, the boogeyman is like Steve Green with a fucking <laughs> man mustache. <laughs> no, but uh, okay. So by the end of the movie. The parents, like, we're at the premiere, and so many people are like, wow, I can't believe you put your kid in this movie. You know, like, a, a lot of them were talking around it like yeah. that. And the parents are like, yeah, I don't think we would ever do this again. Like, I don't think we're, I don't think we're gonna be doing acting and shit. I'm like, dang, just this one experience just crashed Damn. them out. Lovely people. <laughs> well, on that note, we're moving on to our next story. So there was this guy who survived five days in a snow-trapped car by eating packets of Taco Bell's fire sauce. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, what were his poops like? Wait, what? Yep. Straight Taco gets, Bell yeah, fire sauce? Trapped. So, like, the snow enclosed the doors where he couldn't open it? Like yeah. That. And, like, the windows? Maybe it all fell on him. He should do commercials for them. So this is what the car looked like. <laughs> So his SUV with the, along with his doggy too. With the doggy. Wait, the doggy so he can get out? Yeah. So he tried to walk to safety and like. But it's just too far away. It was too cold. It was too far. So they ended up having to resort to just staying there. I wonder how the car got trapped. This was in Oregon. So he got. It was just like deep snow. Also, oh, it was driving and it got stuck. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so because of that, and Taco Bell heard about this, and oh, so yes. they gave. Yes. Them what did they do? They gave him a care package just, and just the sauce. Just I sauces. That <laughs> That'd be legendary, dude. It's almost like a. He's all like fucking twitchy. Yeah. Shut. No. <laughs> just sauce and napkins. Ah, no more. He should open it. They should have sauce, and then he digs deeper, and it's just sauce. <laughs> yeah, but they also gave him a year supply of Taco Bell. That's cool. How much did he have on hand in his, his car? Jeremy. He had five, I heard. Wow. One a day. <laughs> yeah. No. Look at the dog. They, they reported three. Three, okay. Yeah. So Damn. This is Jeremy and the doggy. And so they're saying, like, luckily, you know, they were found alive by someone on a snow. Damn, after day three, that dog was going to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Start I love looking. my dog. <laughs> I love my dog, but after day oh five, after day fucking five, I'm like, damn, dude, it's either oh. me or you. How did he not oh, freeze to death? And they're like, it looks like oh, a turkey. Yeah. Oh, well, they, didn't, they didn't freeze to death because he would turn on the car periodically to try to like keep themselves warm. So that means he didn't sleep. Probably not. Dude, the state of internet celebrity right now, I can't wait to see this kid at Playlist Live next year. <laughs> and he's like, hi, I'm the Taco Bell sauce guy. The, the, the guy who survived this car, Taco Bell you sauce. You know, I'm surprised he's 36, he couldn't, by the way. I couldn't, he couldn't use his phone? Have you been in the mountains? That looked like some, like yeah. some mountain oh. mountain. I Maybe never no have service, no reception. ever. Yeah. Can I see that picture? I felt like he could have got out. Sure Bart's just crazy. judging you. <laughs> Yeah, there's trees. So like, what well, so what you're supposed to do, if you like, if you are stuck in snow or mud or sand, I, I just think he has a lack of knowledge. You can break branches off and you lay tracks under the tire, so that provides grip. So I think he could have got out, but I just don't think you know. He's probably yeah. cussing you out right now. He's like, motherfucker, you don't think I tried all this shit? You think I wanted to be here? For I don't five see days? no branches on the floor. <laughs> uh, well, wait, he could have climbed out the window, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying like you can get the car out of the snow <laughs> if you lay tracks on the floor. With the branches. Well, you couldn't get a fucking truck out of mud without help, so. Oh, I didn't have branches. Yeah. I would take it easy. I didn't have branches. There were trees all around there. No, no, I didn't have any branches. <laughs> I did not have branches. I was in the middle of a lake. He's in the middle of a blizzard, bro. I know. Where's he gonna go? 
where I see the trees in the background. The car's probably the warmest place around, too. I know, but he could get out of there. He could have gone yeah, out. You're crumbling. I'm not crumbling. crumbling. You are crumbling. See it. That's how it. <laughs> what do you see? <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't enter no new information. She's just like, nah, you're crumbling. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. But I'm doing this now. <laughs> nah, he could have got out. That's why you gotta use chains. Did they say which flavor they were? Did they say if they fire. were fire? Oh, fire. I said that. Five. Diablo is my favorite. I bet you he found oh, those yeah. packets too, like in his car, like under the seat or something. Yeah, in his glove compartment. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's been exactly. saving them. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, he had those. I, I, there's just still so many questions I have about the story that they don't. They answer. probably shit and peed outside in the cold, and then they get got back in the car, or whatever. Yeah, he probably peed out the window. Yeah, <laughs> everything's out the window. Yeah. But I'm like, did the dog survive off of the packets too? Like, what's going on in this story? I don't know. They never ask those questions, man. Trust the me. real questions. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to our last story. A man has been criminally charged with breaking a measles quarantine by leaving his home to go to the gym. <sighs> oh, come I on, dude. This. That's so Please. selfish. I heard about this. That's fucking dumb. It's all about the pump, though. <laughs> so he's a carrier or Curls something, and he, he, can, he can spread it? Yeah, so they quarantined him. They said, like, you cannot leave your home until you are no longer deemed um, con contagious. And he's like, yeah, contagious. But he wants the shit. pump. I'm too strong for this shit. You want to be swole. <laughs> So what do they do? They tackle the shit out of him at 24 hour? No, so a cop, an off-duty sheriff's deputy, saw him because he knew about the quarantine order and he saw him at the squat rack gym with his gym bag and Disgusting. then getting in the car, his his wife drove him to the gym and like he was hiding in the car. So he knew his wife fucking helped? Yeah, and the wife also got in trouble. He Dang. had to had to had to Dude, go. How to the gym? dumb are these people? I don't go anymore. It's just the whole thing. Like, <laughs> that guy's an asshole. I don't know. That's people why. could be measles. They don't wipe the equipment down. Now I got measles because I'm trying to get big. It's too risky. Yeah, I'm not going to the gym either because I don't want to get no measles. Yeah, exactly. I haven't been in weeks. Before I even knew about this, my body was like, you know what? It might be a measles outbreak. Don't yeah. tell me where this happened. Dude, it happened in LA. Please, please. <laughs> They must think measles is like having a cold. I know, right? What like, is measles? I don't even know what the fuck. It's is. deadly, dude. Yeah. What is it? It's like a skin disease? It's, it's like, like a, a fucking ancient disease. Well, it's like it's like old. I didn't know people still. Does it look like measles. chicken pox? Yes. Rubella. It does. They have uh, it's boils. Yeah. So it's like spat splat. What is it? Is it splat? Splat. <laughs> so they're saying that Blister? the symptoms don't appear until 10 to 14 days after exposure. They include cough, runny nose, inflamed eye, sore throat, fever, and a red blotchy skin rash. Oh. I thought we were all supposed to get shots for this shit. Yeah, show. they do say that it's preventable with vaccines. But then now, there's all these anti-vaxxers. So was he an anti-vaxxer or he... Are you a pro-vaxxer, Tiff? Yeah. Oh. I'm pro-science. I'm pro vaxxer. Me too. I'm anti vax all the Are you really? No, no. no. You can't believe but, shit. But I am a flat I am a flat earther though. Are you? I am. Come on. Big time. Oh no, I'm big time. It's the flat. truth. I don't, I, don't, no truth <laughs> I think that if you got in a plane and went up, I think that it you it is round looking, but not round. <laughs> my friend's a flat earther and he's dead serious about it. Oh, oh really? Yeah, oh yeah, I interviewed him on my podcast and he's really smart too. Yeah. Because another one of my friends was a flat earther but he had no answer. What's his biggest argument? The, the plane is a huge one. It's if the earth is, is flat, I mean if the earth is round and your plane goes straight, you would have to keep tilting the plane down to compensate for the curve. So the true, curve. explain that. But you basically go straight and you never have to tilt down, you know? And his other <laughs> thing is- Our size. Does he, he, he flew, he, he went on a, on a regular plane and he took a leveler and like had it on the <laughs> plane. Was the, he the one that was on JK News? Well, he was in the Netflix documentary as well. Netflix had a documentary about Flat Earth and he was he was one of the people who spoke on it. But planes never tilt. They don't, they, when they go down, they don't yeah. go like this. They just, they descend while, st while staying level. Basically, if you fly straight forward, you should go into outer space, bro. Because if you think about the Earth, it, I'm not agreeing with him, yeah. right? I don't know how to, how to. Oh, you don't know how to explain it. Well, that's very to... convenient. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Very so his other thing was like, uh, bodies of water don't curve. Like if you fill the bathtub with water, it takes the form of a of, of the bathtub. But if the earth is flat, how is it curving around then the Then what's earth? gravity for for him? So he doesn't believe in gravity. Oh. He said it's all density. <laughs> So if you put a, a a ball in the in the in a pool, he doesn't believe in gravity. I love this guy. So his his thing is it's just density. So the reason when I jump up and come down, it's not because of gravity. It's because I'm I'm more heavier than the Earth, and the plane goes up because the jet engine is fighting against the density 
of the. What about the experiments that they do? Sorry, we're grilling you. No, no, no. Uh, but what about the experiments where they drop like a rock and like a penny, and it it they. Both it's another the density. Uh, density. And, but here's the thing where it's it gets weird, and this he didn't really have a great answer for. I was like, what about the end of the Earth? Eventually, you get to the end if it's flat. Right. So his answer was, there's pirates like uh, the oh, government. Oh fuck, lost me. The government has uh, people on boats that basically will point guns at you and tell you to turn around. And if you actually get to the end, there's like ice walls that are really tall, and like you the can Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> the wall. Yes. Well, basically, that's exactly yeah. what I said. I, yeah. That's it. what his answer was. Yeah. And I was just like, if it's flat, this is what I don't understand, right? If we go like to Asia, how come we're not cut off? You know what I mean? Like if it looks no, like Asia's a map. Not so his 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 answer is so you know the Truman Show, yeah, yeah. right? And it's just a big though. He's like the Earth is here, like this is the Earth, and it goes around like this. So we go from America to Asia here and there. So we're not really going around the globe. We're just going around. But what's the, the reason of, for this like big ass lie? The government. It's a government conspiracy. Oh, and they know something. The whole like it's like Illuminati on a global scale was his answer for that. And they, if they control you with little things like that, then imagine the other things they can control you with. Because I was like, what does it matter if it's flat? Or, like, yeah. what, what, what could you gain from that? And he didn't have like a clear answer. Money, always money. M money, yep. money makes sense to me. But he yeah. was like, it's, it's control. There were sun watchers, and and it was a whole thing. Oh no, like, you can monetize pictures of like around Earth. You can monetize the shit. Like, and okay. they have, and they have. There's people that fly. <laughs> that, globe. There's people that flew <laughs> over the globe Antarctica. In the streets. <laughs> He, he, he argues that you've never people oh, that flew over Antarctica though. They do that all the time. So I'm like, what? Nobody's saying that everything's on just the plane though. Like, no, no, but I get okay. So if everything's it, if, in front of the wall. If the North Pole is a center, right, and then it's like shaped like a disc, like this. Yeah. And uh, Antarctica's at the end, right? right? If 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 that's the case, then you you shouldn't be able to go over Antarctica because that's the right. wall. You would bump into the right. into the air. But people fly over Antarctica all the time. Well, his argument is that no one actually really does that. Yeah, they have just pirates. been told they they do that. The, and the air pirates. Yeah. Well, the the the, the, the overall global supremacy group um, is the one that allows you to fly the the routes oh. that the planes. Here's the thing. I think that the moon is bullshit. He says that too. I think it's not even real, dude. It's not even fucking real. It's Truman Show. <laughs> That's what he was saying, though. He doesn't believe we ever went to the moon. Like it's a whole, it's it's a whole thing. But the moon itself is not real, Larson. <laughs>